Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. Today I thought I would do a review of some looms that I recently purchased. Not only that, but I realized I hadn't shown you this lovely shawl. And this is Lacey. Sorry about that. This is Lacey Hooked on Owl's new shawl. Sonora shawl and I was one of the testers of it so I'm going to show you this is the one that I kept and this was using scarfy yarn so I'm going to insert that video here so enjoy that part and I'll be back in just a few minutes Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. I'm going to say that um, only because I don't know when I'm going to put this video in. It is probably going to be put in for the December 20th or maybe later podcast. And the reason being is this was my test crochet for Lacey on Hooked on Owls. So when she releases a pattern, you'll get to see this part of the video. This is called her Sonora shawl. And this one was done in uh, one of the Super Saver ombres. And it was the anemone color. And I used the hook that she had suggested. And I will tell you, this one, she had sent a correction to the pattern. And I was already, like, right here. And the correction was back here. I didn't correct it. I left it. Blocked out nice. Worked fine, even with the mistake in it. And the mistake was just some extra stitches. Um, did mean I had to block it out a little more aggressively than normal. And then the second one I did in Scarfy. And this was, was done, you used two skeins of Scarfy. One of the skeins was um, cream and silver was the name of it and the second one was called no cream and silver and then the second skein that I used was silver teal and you can see it doesn't matter what you do it in this just comes out beautifully it was a joy to do this shawl, and um, I'm very glad that I got to do that. So, the anemone is going to go to prayer shawl. The other one I'm going to keep. <laughs> I liked it that much, and I like the scarfy. Scarfy yarn is really nice to work with, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep that one. All right, let's get back to something else. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I thought I would show you what I started on the looms. I had started this hat on the KB loom. And uh, it's the hat loom that they have. And I realized I had made it too short, so I've gonna, I need to undo the um, gather stitch and put the stitches back on to add some more rows. And this is just done out of uh, probably Orchid, I think. Phone's annoying me today. So um, I will be taking that out and putting that back on. But when you use the KB hat loom, even the smallest setting, Supposedly, it is a setting that you can make newborn hats on. You can see how big that is. That'll fit like one-year-old, two-year-old. 
So, I found these new looms, and they are by boy. They are a small gauge loom. So I took the smallest one for the newborn, and I made a hat, and it's not too bad. I had forgotten about um, pulling stitches tighter to avoid those ladders there. It's been a while since I've played with my looms, okay? But, let's look at the looms. This is the KB hat loom, and as you can see, those pegs are nice, and they're a good size. They're about an inch long. Let me double check. Well, they're about an inch and a quarter inches long. Nice, easy to use. Um, I do use nail polish to mark rows. Um, the main reason I was marking this is because of doing a brim, knit two, purl two. And uh, so, yeah, that's one way to mark your looms. And then when you need to mark them another way, you just take that off and remark. Then, of course, there's the normal Nifty Knitters. These are the original Nifty Knitters, which you can't get anymore. Um, Boy makes a set of them. They're like them, where you get the four. And uh, Loops and Threads make some. I mean, there's a couple of companies that make them. And these are about an inch and a quarter in length. And, of course... They're a nice little loom peg. You have the groove. There is the hole down here in the bottom that a lot of people gripe about. I never got my hook stuck in that. So, I don't know. You know, maybe some people when they're digging deep go too deep. But then you've got that nice little peg on the side there. So you've got two different kind of pegs. I also have a kiss loom that I use a lot. Um, I use it mostly for making bags and making sweaters. Um, it is, it's a two-prong system. It's a little bit different. Um, pegs are a little harder to use. But, I wanted to do this review on this. And this is a set of the lightweight yarn round loom set. You can use supposedly a size 3 yarn. Um, you can use uh, a worsted weight, which is what this hat was made out of. Made a nice, lovely little hat. But let's look at that loom. Let's look a little closer. I hope you can see on these pegs, it's got this nice little dip right here. Quite frankly, it looks like a penis that's been circumcised. But your yarn gets caught up in that when you're working with it. And this peg is three-fourths of an inch. The other pegs are the same size, three-fourths of an inch. Just because it's small gauge doesn't mean you have to make the peg shorter. Whoever designed this, yeah, I'm not thrilled with it. This is actually going back. Um, if you get them at Walmart for about $15, give or take, depending on, you know, your Walmart's prices. But that little lip right there, yarn catches up under it when you're winding. Doesn't matter if you use a yarn guide or not. I do not use a yarn guide. I always found them annoying. Um, I've never had a problem with, you know, tension for the looms. But, um, one, because these pegs are so short, 
makes it difficult to wind, to wrap, and even when you're doing a U-wrap, your yarn is catching up under here, so you're constantly, and you know, those of you that loom knit, many times you'll push your stitches down towards the bottom. Because your yarn catches up here, you, you visibly hear a pop when you're pushing the yarn down lower. So, this gets an F in my book. I am sending an email to Simplicity about it. Um, it is a boy brand, which Simplicity makes. But, um, yeah, it's going back. It's, it's awful. I do not have any Sin Wood looms. However, for my birthday, I have ordered two. Um, I like to make a, the baby hats, and I also make adult hats so I've ordered one to make adult and one to make the newborn baby hats um, I'm thrilled to death that I'm going to finally own some Sinwood looms um, they are beautiful looms from other people I've seen so yeah I'm looking forward to that set coming in and uh, that's it for the loom part gets an F in my book I did start a shawl on my big long KB looms. Um, you'll notice I don't have the brace on today. I still have a lot of pain. I had planned on doing a little, you know, I was doing Jada's blanket she started this year. From the time that she released it to now, it's taken me that long to do two rows left-handed. But it's a great learning experience. But I will tell you, I had decided I wanted to do the uh, chainless foundation stitch. I gotta tell you, right-handed, it's a breeze. <laughs> left-handed. It was a little more difficult. Took me quite a way to get it done. But I have got two rows of that blanket done. So it may take me all week to do another, you know, row or so. The only other thing I have been doing is, you know, I've been continuing to work on that knitted scarf. And that's all that I have done this week. Um, that is basically all I'm capable of doing. I went upstairs and tried to cut, and I had some difficulty because I needed to cut interfacing for the bags that I have cut out. They're all ready to sew. Um, so some of them are interfaced, some are not. Let's just put it this way. The ones that are not interfaced are getting done faster. It still takes a while because, you know, you do a lot of ironing when you're sewing. <laughs> and, of course, I can't pick up the iron with this hand, so I'm having to try to iron left-handed. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I have decided that I'm going to continue to work on crocheting left-handed, right-handed, even after this gets healed. I do have some exercises that I can do for that, so uh, I will be doing those exercises. Okay, I can hear in the background the snowblower is coming, so I'm going to pause this, and I will pick this up in a few minutes. I have some shout-outs of some new channels, and uh that I think you might be interested in, so I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, and I'm back. Um, we had less than a dusting, so the snow crew came out to do their little snow plowing, which I find rather interesting. Get that situated a little better. And, uh, I don't know why they decide to come out now. We're supposed to have snow later today. I don't know why they just didn't wait, but 
whatever, you know. Maybe they want to get it done for today and say they were doing done. This list I have is quite a list. So, um, down below where you will find the information on how to contact me, you'll see a little snippet of a description of the video. And you'll see something that says show more. You click on the show more, you'll be able to see all of these links. And just click on them and go to those channels and check them out. There are, like I said, quite a few. Um, so I'm just going to name them off as we go. Of course, the first one, Sherry Ann of Yarning with Mimi. She is like me. She does a lot of charity work. And boy, does she crank out the items. And she does some beautiful work. She knits and crochets. Uh, she also does um, a lot of uh, spa kits. So, um, go check her out. Beautiful channel. Um, and that is Sherry Ann with Yarning with Mimi. There is someone new I found yesterday. And this is a young man. His name is Austin. And his channel is Austin's Craft Corner. He crochets and he knits. Um, it's a little hard to hear, so use your headphones when you're listening. Um, I did send a suggestion to him about the sound. But other than that, he does some beautiful work. <laughs> beautiful. Um, there is also Sophie, Sophia of Sophie Goff. And she is from Sweden. She has two podcasts up so far. She does some beautiful work as well. And um, she's got some pretty blue hair. That's the kind of blue hair that my son would have killed for when he was younger. Now that he's a hairstylist, he knows how to get to that color. And uh, he doesn't do it anymore. Let's his hair grow natural. So, yeah. Now, this young lady, I found her, and then there's only three, I think, three podcasts up. I don't know what's happened to her, but um, she does crochet, and her name is Sarah Lowe of the Way Out Crochet Podcast. And way out is spelled like when you weigh something on a scale. Um, the Some of her podcasts she talks about she has a heart issue that she had to have surgery for. And she was, having some, she was going to have the gastric sleeve put in. I haven't heard any more from her. I've sent some email in hopes of contacting her. Um, I hope that she is doing well and that uh, she will pick up and start podcasting again. She is, she's quite hilarious. Um, she is like me. She has a potty mouth, although my potty mouth is getting a little better. So, uh, yeah. Then there is Circle of Friends Crochet and Tea Afternoons. Um... And then this young gal, Lori Lulu327, I just found her, and I find her very infectious. She has, she has a scarf that she just put out for sale called the Hadley Scarf. And that's on my list to do, eventually. You know, this right hand just won't cooperate, so the left hand is slower than normal. And then there is Bethany Moose. She calls her podcast Naughty Moose. She's adorable. Um, check her out as well. Um, there is a young lady called Becca of Renee and Bert. She does a little bit of every kind of craft. And it's interesting to see what she is up to. There is ACS Creations 1. 
Um, that is very interesting to watch. Jenny of Beetle Babe. And then, of course, there is Elizabeth Pierre. Um, when you go to her channel, start out with her 10 non-yarny things about me. She starts out with a beautiful song um, from her heritage. She is Native American. And um, she knits. Um, I don't know that she crochets. I haven't seen, you know, I'm binge watching her right now. But she has a video where she talks about making realistic eyes. And that is something that I am, that, that's up, pulled up to look at this afternoon. So um, give her a, a check out. And I think you'll enjoy the way that she presented her um, 10 non-yarny things about me. I especially liked where she talked about her supernatural encounters. As well as the opening with the beautiful Native American song. And uh, and her ending with her favorite food. <laughs> I think I'm going to like watching her. <laughs> there is Lori of Purple Butterfly. Her videos are right now are real short and sweet. I, I like short and sweet. I like long. Um, I prefer medium. So... You know, but there's a lot there. Um, there's Pam of Red Gingerbread. I believe I mentioned her before, but I don't think, or maybe I didn't. Um, I don't remember mentioning her before. Um, Pam is from Louisiana. And you can really hear the accent. And, of course, I'm hoping, I haven't gone through to look at some of her past videos, but I'm hoping that um, she's got a few of those uh, Cajun recipes up on her channel that uh, she talks about. This one I have watched for a long time. Um, it's been a while since I've seen her. And that is Alicia of Lupine Hook. She used to do knitting crochet. She now does knitting crochet, mostly knitting that I've seen but she's also done a lot of sewing of late and so she's sharing a lot of that um, I don't know why she has such small numbers I love watching her channel so um, she is from I believe Seattle Washington area then there is Maximum Yarnage and that is quite an interesting channel and then we come to another video that I'm going to add here at the end you know that I have that trapped nerve, but it also got me to thinking about, um, as crocheters, I know many times when I was crocheting with my right hand a lot, that I would overuse it, overextend it, and get a little soreness, you know, in the hand and the wrist. And I realized I had forgotten to do a lot of the hand stretches and exercises that I used to do long, long time ago, all the time, before I started crocheting. Some of those hand stretches are also some exercises that are used for the entrapment of that ulnar nerve that I have. So there's some great stretches to do, and I'm going to insert that I'm going to add that onto this list for you to go watch for some hand stretches um, thought I would tell you a little bit about this trap nerve basically it is because I I do tend to sleep on my right side and I sleep with my arm in a bent position and they think that that is what caused a lot of the issues that I was having and that day that I picked up the sewing machine that I actually had stretched the tendon and those muscles up over that nerve so that is part of the problem that I'm having so um, a lot of those hand stretches will help you with keeping those nerves taken well care of uh, there are quite a few exercises to help with nerve entrapment 
and I am doing those, one of those that I cannot stand, I hate, and it is a nerve glide. If any of you have ever had nerves that have been pinched or trapped, when you're taught to do nerve glides, they do help in the long run, but initially while you're doing them and shortly afterwards, they hurt. So, <sighs> but, um, you know, we need to take care of ourselves. We need to do some of these hand exercises, wrist exercises, those kind of things. And remember to get up and walk around. Uh, if you have one of those bags where you can walk and crochet, do it. So, uh, that I'm going to close. And I will see you again next week. The only other thing that I want to add is the Tunisian, Tunisian Crochet Series and the Create right now are on hold until this is healed up a little bit further and I can begin to use it. I tried to do some Tunisian Crochet with my left hand. Let's say I need a little more practice. So, uh, yeah. Those are going to be on hold for a little while until I can get this healed up and working again. So I will see you again next week. Everybody have a great week. Remember, choose to be kind.